Sheik, what's going on, man? Yo. How are you? What's poppin', fam? I'm good. One day at a time, man. That's it. Uh, I hear that. Well, yo, thank you for all that you do for Ambrosia for Heads. We are uh, big fans of yours. I got to hear the album, man. Nice stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank y'all, too. For real. Believe, yeah. believe it or not, my uh, my favorite track on the album might be the intro. I love it because it, it kind of oh, covers yeah. your upbringing and the track builds as Hell the story yeah. builds, and it takes you in and now. You know, this is an important album in your career. I know they all are, but tell me a little bit about setting the tone. Yo, but yo, can I stop you right real quick? Yeah. Thank you for that, because I love that. I love that intro too, man. I swear. Yeah. I was like when I, I sat on, I saved that for so long. I said, yo, this is. I need this for an intro. But anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, just because even even I mean, I think you just said it. You needed it as an intro, and you've been sitting on it. Yeah. Um, just tell me yep. a little bit about how you set the tone of the album with with this, you know, with with Bundy with this moment. Well, you know, you know what it was with with this project. My thought process, a lot of it was written on. I was touring a whole lot. I've been touring like crazy. Like when I'm not with the locks, I, I run around with Ghostface, with you know, um, and uh, it's just everywhere. So I've been getting tracks like all over. I've been in like I'll be in Australia and just check, you know, nothing to do, and go through my my uh, my computer and pull out these tracks and just and write on the tour bus. So like my whole process was basically like, yo, I want to bring it. I'm paying attention to what everything was going on out out here as far as like uh. A lot of, like, the dance records, I'm not knocking none of them. But, you know, I, I wanted to bring it back to that gritty-type, more lyrical sound, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and then, um, uh, 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 and then I, wanted, I wanted to show growth as well or, as far as my lyrics and everything. And, 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 and produ production-wise, I wanted some real soulful sounds, and I wanted to bring it back to that, to that essence, man. And that's just how I did it. I said, I need an intro for this. I need, some, I need a skit. I need, I need, I need, I need, I need to... to for the guys on the pull-up bars and working out, type, you know what I mean, in the jail yard, I just wanted to cover it all. Right. Yeah. You know, it's interesting that you say that, you know, you write a lot, you know, while you're touring now, because I, I picture you writing in, you know, nice hotels and, and nice restaurants and, you know, living an entertainer's life. But what's crazy about you is, you know, for these last 20 years plus, you know, you've been yeah. authentic. You can make a song like Hood Brother, and because that's what people yeah, associate yeah. you with. And, and, you know, is it right, ever been a right. challenge for you to, you know, um, change your writing environment and still come across so authentically? I, I can tell you what, my first challenge, I don't know if I ever told anybody this, my first challenge as far as creatively writing was, I think when I when I um, I made a song called Good Love, right? Yeah. And and, and, and that joint, just, it took off. It was, uh, it, but to, you know, the reason why I was challenged, it was a chick record for me. And mm -hmm. I was like, man, because we come from like, you know, talking so gritty and guns and drugs and and, and our surroundings or whatever, what have you. And I remember, like, like um, Cosmic Cas or somebody on SNS and all them came to the studio here. They was like, yo, bro, you got to go with it. Because I was kind of like, damn, but what are they going to say if I talk to the girls? Everybody been telling me to go with the women and all this and that. But, you know, that was only my – and then when I did it, it was, like, top ten record on every station, song number one, you know? That was my only yeah. – that was probably my only ever challenge as far as writing. And it worked. It, man, it's crazy. Big record for me. You know, it's funny you you mentioned Good Love, and you know I'm a I'm a Chic fan since the '90s, and I love the oh, hard stuff. I love the mixtape tracks, but yeah, you know, Good Love is my favorite record of yours that you've yeah, ever done. On, and I remember, right? I remember where I yeah. was when Cosmic Kev played the record in Philly. Like I remember where I was driving when he dropped the track for yeah. Philly. And you know, that's such an interesting Crazy. record. It was on the first Sil Silverback Gorilla, and I'm sure a lot of people see yeah. this album. You know, the first Silverback yeah. Gorilla is not maybe your most famous record. It might not be your best selling. Right. But you're doing a sequel. Right. Of it. Tell me a little bit why you know you, you chose that lane and that one to pick up on. Oh man, because I, I wanted to, I wanted to get beast mode, man. I, I just wanted to get beast mode, a hundred percent. Like I, you know, like I said earlier, as far as like just um, paying attention to seeing what's what's going on around it, I just wanted to bring it back to that. Not necessarily as far as sales of the other one, or like uh, you know, I just wanted that that mentality of thinking. Mm. That's where I was at. Sure. You know? Yeah, definitely. Absolutely not. Now, I'm going to say that. And, and I, I'm, glad, oh. I'm, glad, I'm, I'm glad I brought that up. Like, far as like, and then, and then when, I, when, I be on, when I say, when, when you see the gorilla and this and that, it, it, by no means is it, it that's just my way of, because of, uh, some people are like, oh, oh, man, what are you doing? You're taking his back with this gorilla shit. Yo, you know, the Black Panthers would be mad. Nah, listen, it's my frame of thought on right. my gorilla B shit. You know what I mean? That's what it is when I say that. Oh yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. And um, you know, I, uh, I you know, and I, I, I love um, I love Hood Brother, and I love the fact, you know, not to make too much of features, 
But you put three other guys right. on this record that have all been around, right, right, right. And maybe with the exception of Joel, as long as you have, and you yeah. all have endured. And I love that because yeah, you man. all have endured through speaking to your audience. You can cross over, of course, but you've never lost sight of who you are. You know, it, it's a record, that, but bro. there's so much more yeah, to it than yo, that. Tell me about of course, that, especially that, working that with, like, collaboration. Come on, MOP? Yeah. Who's not a fan yeah. of MOP? <laughs> I mean, I've seen right. him perform not too long ago, and, and, and them being on stage, I, first of all, I am a fan, period, of this game, of this sport, of everything. Like, But, you know, you know, when I get a chance to work with, with Bill Dance or Fame or anybody, like, in Trade of Truth coming out of Texas, man, he's killing it right now. You know, and Joel, I just think, is a monster MC, period. Mm -hmm. Slout, salute to their whole crew over there, Slaughterhouse and all of them. You know what I mean? So to bring that about was just, was like a blessing, man. And and, and, and I got to say, that none of them fronted. They, they did it immediately and was like, yo, they they told us, yo, we big fans of the locks and yourself. Like, you know what I mean? I was like, ah, thank you, bro. And and it came well, out beautifully. Word. And every everybody, you know, all four of you guys, you know, have a few different styles. But on that particular record, everybody put lyrics yeah. forward, and it shows. That's what's up. Thanks, bro. Hell yeah. You know, yeah. you um, you mentioned uh, you mentioned touring with Ghost, and 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 you got the record. I yeah. love it. And it's crazy because I've I've spoken to him a few times, spoken to you a few times. You know, just talking to you yeah. guys, you're very different personalities, but you both love hip hop. You both <laughs> love your audience. Yeah. Um, you know, tell me, were you at all surprised over these last? you know, five years coming in the Woo Block on just how much you guys bonded on and off the mic? Yeah, nah, you know, you know what, let me tell you, that's my brother. People be like, yo, man, y'all got the same energy when we around each other, you know, and, 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 and you know, I'm telling you how it started, it was like, um, we got the same management, Mike Caruso, <laughs> and I had got signed to Def Jam a while ago, and, um, and, uh, and we went on tour for the first time. He had his own bus, I had mine, but we was like, yo. You know, first of all, he's been putting us, me, Kiss and Styles, on all his records back then. Or we've been trying to get him on ours or the whole clan, the whole Wu Tang. We, we love them dudes, man. But Ghost is just my, my big bro. And this, you know, that song that I love it came about my man Shroom out the Netherlands, man. He, he, he sent me this crazy ass track. And it, I mean, uh, and I just, I can hear Ghost just killing it. You know, Ghost was, and anytime you talk to Ghost, you sound like the records from back then. You know what yeah. I mean? He really sounds like that old Wu Tang shit. Like, you know, when you talk, him and Ray. It really sounded like right. the skits and shit. So I was like, oh, you're going to kill us. You're going to kill us. I played it for another day. We was in um, uh, uh, Mexico City uh, last weekend, and um, I played it to him. Crazy. He was like, oh, man, this is it. Yeah, we shoot the video to him, cool. too. Yep. That's very cool. You um, you know, it, it was interesting. Earlier this year, I feel like Fridays became the biggest day of music, even though, you know, I, I, I'm not going to ask you any locks questions, but, you know, even though there's not an album that was as crazy as... Hell yeah is um, right. you, Styles, and Kiss, it just seemed like on Fridays you guys were just lighting it up with these freestyles, with these with these a la carte yeah. tracks. Was that an organized Definitely. plan, or did it just so happen? Um, It just happened. I really want to say it just happened as far as, like, uh, uh, us sitting around saying, yo, not not really like a plan, but I remember, like, I think Styles kept dropping a couple, then Kiss got on deck, like, you know, just dropping them every week, and then I just came, like, after – and start leaking them joints out, and then before you know it, we had, like, hundreds of songs on SoundCloud and all over the place, you know? Right. And then and recently I just dropped a mixtape called Gorilla Wing, which everybody right. loved to death. I dropped it on Halloween. I took the SoundCloud joints, and I put, like, 12 new ones on there, you know, just to make the, the to feed the people. Yeah. Absolutely. Dope, man. We, we, you know what it is? We love our, we love the sport still. We love the sport. And, like, yo, we don't, we don't feel like we ain't going to stop until, like, I don't see no reason to right now. Especially like if I yeah. feel like yo, I'm 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 spitting harder and better than all these them, 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 the young boys out there. I'm just, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. And we in the best shape of our life, man. Listen. Yeah. yeah. You um you have a song on the album called Legends, and in it, you know, you talk about just kind of how the industry climate has changed. And you know, it, it was interesting. <laughs> you know, two weeks ago, um, I was listening to a Redman interview, and he said that. You know, ultimately, what led him to you know leaving Def Jam was the fact that he put that Def Jam put you, him, and Ghost out in 2010, all within three weeks of each other yeah. without much marketing, and and that was real because I remember right. that, and I thought all three of you guys made really good albums that deserved more credit than that. No doubt. And, um, you know, yeah. it's cool now to see you at Tommy Boy. I know you're a priority there. You've worked at a lot of different right. labels in your life. How important, regardless of whether it's independent, mainstream, self-released, is it to be um, treated as a priority wherever you are? I mean, first of all, you got to hold yourself 
and and that's why I, I salute uh, Doc Redman for doing that, for for even making that comment. Like you got to hold yourself a priority for anybody else to want to think of you as one. You know what I mean? It's kind of like it's kind of like the same with working, working hard. Like motherfucker ain't gonna work harder than you. Like you got to make show them that you're ready to work. And then that's how hard the label of anybody else or anybody around you. If you, if you could be doing construction. If they see you laying around, your whole crew going to lay around. You know what I mean? Right. So it's, it's important to do that. But as far as at a, at a, at a label being, a, being a, like, a, you know, the top dog or being priority, it feels good. It's, it's great to me. For real, I just want anybody to work. I want, I want, I want it, you know what? I, I, I was telling Brian and I'm over at Tommy Boy. I want it to feel like you're working together, not y'all working for me and none of that shit. I want it to feel like, yo, we working together at this shit. This interview right here, I'm gonna give you some stuff. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you some, 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 some info so you can put it down and so we can make it work together, make this whole article come out dope. I want it always to feel like we work it together, son. Period. Everything is a collaboration. It has to be. It has to be. Cause you don't want one person walking away feeling another kind of way. You can't control that shit sometimes, but it's better when y'all on, y'all, y'all got the same understanding. That's interesting. And I mean, you know, what's cool right? about that is, yeah. is, I mean, you're an artist. I mean, more so, like, anybody, I mean, you're like Lil Wayne in the fact that you've built a career working with pretty much everybody in the industry at one point or another. Yeah, yeah. So that attitude, yep. I'm sure, is a big part of who you are creatively. It is, man. I, I want to say so. And everybody, I, I, I mean, the people that I've been around, they seem to appreciate that, that frame of thought. Like, wow, mm. thanks, Luce. Like, thanks. She, like, you know what I mean? They seem to appreciate that. And you get more done. I don't care if it's your engineer behind the board. Recording you while you while you doing your thing in the booth to, you know, to anybody. Or, yeah. You know, I have um I have uh, two more questions for you. And, and right now in Ambrosia for okay. Health, we um we've yeah. been asking people, you know, what is the greatest album of all time? And and maybe there's no answer, but it gets people discussing. It gets people going back into yeah. their music catalog. And you know, I right know. now we're still on the '90s. And you worked, you know, in addition to you know. Money, Power, Respect, you worked on two, and more than that, Definitely. classic albums in the 90s. Yeah. But I want to ask you about It's Dark and Hell is Hot and um, Life After Death. Right. I mean, Ooh. obviously, in that frame of right. mind, you're a young guy. You're seeing the industry. Right. Um, did you grasp the magnitude of what you were working on at the time in those recordings? Honestly, uh, 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 see, all right, let me address wait, let me address with X. At the time, I, we knew that he was going to blow up and, and bubble like that. Because to, to, before y'all heard of him, he was a star in Yonkers, New York. Like, he was just always this guy, this OG that was that was sick. And everybody couldn't wait for him to come around and grab the mic. So we knew he had that that, that special talent. So it was like, it was like at the same time, I, I didn't grasp it all the way because we kind of knew of him. So y'all, y'all didn't know him yet. You know what I mean? So I kind of didn't grasp it right then and there, but I knew it was something special, period. Because, you know, they, before the Rough Riders and all that, they, they, DNY, they was our managers. They, they just managed this, these guys called the Locks, the Bomb Squad, the Warlocks and all that back then. And so we got the record deal, and our managers decided to make their own record label. And they had this artist named DMX. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, it was kind of like a, a, a in-house thing. That's why I probably didn't grasp the magnitude of it until later. I remember when he called me down there to, to uh, Irv called me like, yo, I need you to do a hook for this joint. And I, I just started jotting down. I said, yo, y'all niggas want to be killers? Get at me, dog. Y'all niggas. And I just wrote that hook, get at me, dog. And then, you know, it just after I just started seeing it slowly, but not realizing what was going on. Now, Big, I was, it was like, it was like, oh, man, we getting on this album right here? Woo! Right. We couldn't wait because, you know, it was crazy. We was, they, they was the Chicago Bulls at the joint, tipping everybody over there, you know. I remember when Big pulled up on us. We was at a club, and he was like, yo, I just laid my verse to this joint called Last Days. Check this out. I need you to do your verses to this. I was like, oh, man, you kidding me? Yeah, that, that was like, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, just, just one follow-up to that. I mean, it's funny. Get At Me, Dog is my favorite record on It's Dark and Hell is Hot. I mean, it just captures. Get out of here. Um, Serious? The, that's yeah, the fun, I man. mean, and, yeah. and, and I got to ask you, because the video was nuts, and I know that that video, like so many great videos in hip-hop history, was one that yeah. didn't get aired properly. And I mean, knowing what right, that record right, meant right. to you, especially as a solo with that video going it was like, it was like, yeah, it that was, was so that many lights. It was like dark. It was yeah. real dark and light and like lights on them and all that, right? Yep, yep. And I think that was oh. part of the reason why MTV said they didn't want to air it was not only was gotcha. it graphic, but it was like people, you know, mm -hmm. epileptic and all of that. Um, yeah. You know, were you were you pretty disappointed when that? I know on radio it was going nuts, but when the video didn't do what right. it could have done. Um, 
I think we now I wasn't really disappointed because I think it still came across. It still came across. Okay. Now, if, the, if they didn't play it on the radio and all that, maybe I, I would have been out of the pissed because I know right. I gave him. I know I gave him a hot hook, and that joint was crazy. Like the beat was just so classic. So you know, that's how that went. Well, I got to leave you asking you the very question that we've been asking all of our readers. Um, in 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 Shibuya's yep. opinion, what is the greatest rap album of all time? <laughs> Of all time, I mean, come on, are we talking even back to 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 to, to Run DMC and the Beastie Boys on yeah. up now? Or yep, yep. I mean, and, and and I'm not asking you to speak for other people. Just in your perspective, in your life, maybe you know, to you as an MC, what what's the album? You know, Life After Death. Big. Oh wow. I know it sounds mm-hmm. real biased. I know, and then I then I was gonna say, you know, I was gonna say too, the Chronic. Hmm. Then I was gonna Ooh, say, uh, say I got a couple. Oh, all right, then then ah uh, oh, man, because there's certain times <laughs> in my life when certain, certain shit happened. Like I remember leaving work, listening to Buckshot Shorty, and boom, 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 like like you know, and, and the whole boot camp clicking. Ah oh, man, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with Big. Cool. I I'm mean, I hear you. And, yeah. and what's crazy is is you know that album. I was just looking. We were doing the research today, and you know a lot of albums stopped selling at a certain point and that album you right. know i mean it's a, it's a diamond album and it reached diamond in the 2000s wow. and was released in 97 and so still going probably right now you exactly, know what i mean exactly yeah and yeah. you're part of that yeah gotta love it got you yeah, no doubt <laughs> you're part of that no doubt hell yeah yo hell chic man. man every time i talk to you i leave the conversation a little bit better than when i picked up the phone man i'm gonna be there thanks bro on december 4th Silverback Gorilla too. No doubt. You can count on my support. No doubt. Thank you so much for taking the time. Big bro, likewise to you. Good questions too. Peace, King. Hell um, yeah. Peace. Thank you. Yep. No doubt. Peace.